Good morning, everyone. It's a good morning. Right? It's always a good morning. That's why we say good morning, because the morning is good. And we say good evening, because the evening is good. And we say good afternoon, because the afternoon is good. And good night, because the night is good, right? And we can genuinely and honestly say all that because God is good, and he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So thank you all for coming. Um, we'll be praying um, for several because we have some out sickness. Rachel, little Rachel, sick. So that's why Holly and Sam are not here. So, uh, but Gary's going to lead worship for us. So, woohoo! He hasn't done that in a long time. So we'll just enjoy worshiping the Lord. So one announcement. Um, there, we'll not have Wednesday evening until next year here. So um, I didn't get a reaction for next year. <laughs> Actually, that's only in, what, two weeks, two and a half weeks. So we'll pick up Wednesday evening again in January. But a um, lot going on, particularly with Gary and I. So um, unless, Phil, if you want to... I should have asked you privately if you want to be here Wednesday evening. I th Mary can't either, so I didn't think. Right. <laughs> um, so um, also, uh, we uh, received a text from... Um, Pastor Ben in Uganda, and they, they are um, needing food desperately for the orphanage. They have corn growing, but they can't harvest it until January. So they just, he just put a um, request out if, they could, if we could help in any way. So if you can today, um, or maybe even next Sunday, because we'll be here next Sunday. Okay, Gary's showing the envelopes. We'll be here next Sunday as well, Christmas Eve morning. We'll probably shorten the service because I've got my Wyoming family here. They will be in town then, and my heart's going to go, ah, 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 because <laughs> they'll be here. But um, they might come, too. I don't know. They'll, they have a long two-day trek to get here. So um, uh, anyway, so uh, we'd like to take up an offering for them in Uganda. So if you um, have that ability, we would love that, and we'll send that to them ASAP. We've been over there. We know what it's like. I mean, if they don't have corn, that's their food. They have maize. They grind it really fine. They call it porridge in the morning. That's what they eat in the morning. And they serve it like, looks like mashed potatoes for their dinner. Occasionally, they might have something to go with it, like beans. But when we were there, the specialty was beans, because beans are still expensive for them out there. So anyway, it'd be nice if we could give to them. So whatever you can do, that'd be awesome. So uh, before we get into prayer, uh, Phyllis would like to uh, share her heart. So I'm going to give her opportunity. You wanna, can you come up here or do you want to just do it from there? Okay. We're so thankful for Phyllis and Richard being here this morning. We love them. They have been with us from day one, her and Elaine. We're neighbors, most of you know that, and um, they've been part of us, we've been part of them for years and years and years and years, and they still love us, they still love Gary and I, thank you. <laughs> What's not to love about these two? <laughs> uh, they're closer to us, I think, than some of our family members. But <clears throat> I just wanted to share a little bit this morning of how, sorry, I'm a crier, what can I say? <laughs> My heart is so touched by everything that you all did during our, our time of grief and the food you brought, monetary donations, everything was you, you all just went above and beyond. And I'm so, so, so appreciative. And the kids weren't at our house, so all the food that came in, 
uh, they, I was able to get six nights for them at the resort where we have a timeshare. And uh, so everything that came in went up there to them and they didn't even have to go buy very little. I think all they had to buy was breakfast food. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'd just like to share a little bit about Ben because I know that you all were, were probably wondering. And he, he was at the house. He'd been staying at the house for a few days. And the night he went to the hospital, he was so, so sick. And he couldn't even walk to the ambulance. They came. <clears throat> they came and picked him up and... It took three people, I think, because he's a big boy, you know, and to put him in the ambulance. But he never came back out of the hospital. And, but he rededicated his life to the Lord. So we will see him again. We will see him in heaven. And, and I saw him um, two days and was going to go the morning of his death. I didn't know he had passed away until his cousin called me and told me. But his cousin was with him. Cousins, well, it was his aunt and his cousin. And they came up from somewhere around Eminence. I'm not sure the little town that they, they are from. But he called them. And told him, he said, Beverly, they were kind of close because he had spent some time with her down there with his aunt and his cousin. And, and <clears throat> he said, Beverly, he said, I need you to come up here. He said, I mean, right now, you know, he was, Ben was demanding. <laughs> no doubt about it, he was demanding. But he said, I need you to come up here right now. And so they jumped in the in her truck and they they came up and spent the rest of the afternoon and evening with him that night and uh, they left and went back to the motel and they got a call at two o'clock in the morning the nurse told him that he she didn't think it was going to be very long so they got up and went back up to the hospital and 6.30, and he was still holding on, but they had to go check out of the motel and, and go get him some breakfast, and so when they got back, he had just passed, but he, he saw, he saw his grandma in the corner of the of his room, he saw his grandmother that passed away several years ago. He saw his dad, Tracy. He saw his his uncle, Roy, that had passed away. And the, <coughs> Beverly told me that that night before they left, I guess they were giving him they were giving him something to keep him comfortable. And uh, she said that he was just waving his arms and dancing in the bed, just sitting up in the bed and waving his arms and just like he was dancing. So, thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for answering prayers. Amen. So many years we prayed and prayed and prayed. God, never failed me yet. Amen. Never failed me yet, although I failed him many, many times, but he's never once failed me. So I just want to give him all the praise Amen. and the glory Amen. because Amen. He's, he's so worthy. Amen. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Amen. But thank you all so much. I appreciate it. So much, so, so much. The food, 
I got to go up and have a meal with them <laughs> one evening. Oh, it was fantastic. And I know because we don't have any bad cooks in this church. They're all good cooks. <laughs> but but they, they were so appreciative. And so they say thank you, although they had to go back to Nevada. And... Uh, they're they're all back to work with the exception of Caitlin. I think she's off till around the seventh of December or something. So she's probably enjoying her little baby girl. Not a baby. She's five years old and knows everything. <laughs> but um, I love you all, and it's good to be back with you all. I missed I missed uh, church. I just had to go to church with the Sunday morning preachers on TV, so, and I got some, you know, that was good too, but anyway, I love you all, and thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts, we really, really mean it, God is so good. We do. We did a night watch when we were at the plaza. Some of you might have been involved for like 12 weeks praying through the night, and the topic was prodigals. And I brought Ben to the table for that night watch for 12 weeks. We all took shifts, and we prayed for Ben. God is faithful to his word. So if you have prodigals, don't stop praying. God hears our prayers, and he's faithful to to answer them. So speaking of prayer, we want to pray for Sandy Burris. She's very sick. Uh, went to the ER. Um, it's just really bad congestion. She was tested for all sorts of things which were negative, So, but she's just not feeling well at all. So, um, And of course, Rachel, little, little Rachel's sick. And Carol Graham is sick. She called this morning. And, um, and then Diana White, she was going to be here and she had a fall. So She'll be fine, too. It's just, she'll be here. So we just want to pray for all of these. Amen? Amen. All right, Father, so we thank you that you hear our prayer, that you see every one of these. You see Sandy Burris and what she's going through and, and little Rachel and Carol and, and Diana. Father, you died on the cross that your salvation was complete through your blood shed, and that means healing. And so we pray over these ones and agree with their prayers being prayed that each and every one is healed and brought back to wholeness because of your work at Calvary and what you've done. We thank you for it, Lord, and we agree together for healing for Sandy Burris and and Rachel, and Carol Graham, and for Diana, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just, before we enter into worship, and Gary's going to lead us into worship today. Yay, he hasn't done that in years. <laughs> so we're, we're thankful. Um, I just was sitting before the Lord and asked him how could I encourage all of you, and myself. I, I glean from the encouragement as well when God gives me stuff, but... I opened up again, this isn't the first time, and so I'm thinking, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want to show me to Acts, and the scripture is Acts 22:15, and this is Paul giving testimony um, when he was questioned about what happened to him, and, you know, I think they wanted to put him in prison and that, but in Acts 22:15. It says, for you, and this is what the Holy Spirit told Paul, for you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. The Apostle Paul, before he was actually in ministry yet, was told, for you, for you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And I want to let you know that we are not exempt from that. And this is what I heard. Know him and testify. Know him and testify. God wants us to experience him, to know him in our own lives. So what opens up out of our heart when we have opportunity 
is to testify. Share the good news. So this is what the Lord led me to, the shepherds. And I want to read a portion of that in Luke 2. Because, you know, to testify of what he has done for us, for you individually, is power. Because no one can take that away from you. When you've experienced the Lord for yourself and he's touched your heart, small, medium, big, it doesn't matter what size it is because God is God. His testimony in you is real and it's powerful and he wants you to use it. So the shepherds... In Luke 2, 16 through 20, this is after the angels came. Remember, the angel came and said, do not be afraid. And then the sky was filled with many, many angels. And they said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And then in verse 16, well, I'm going to start at verse Uh, I got to read, I got to start at verse 15. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this Christ. They saw him. They saw Jesus. They believed what the angels said. And then they made it widely known. Who knows? They stopped and told the postman. They stopped and told the grocery clerk. They stopped and told the Walmart clerk. Right? They widely made known. And all those who heard it marveled at those things that were told them by the shepherds. So this is, uh, this is all fresh in my mind because we've been through the, Karen and I and Diana do Bible Club every Thursday morning and we've been through the Christmas story. I would have you come help me, Karen. But I don't think she wants to. So I make these placards. So we're going to say this together and then I have one more testimony of Jesus' birth, okay, and who testified. But isn't that beautiful? God sent angels to them, probably some of the poorest of the poor, shepherds, and revealed God's plan to them, and they went in haste to see. And when they saw him, God says, see me. Holy Spirit says, know me and testify. I I just can't get over that. It's just powerful. So this is what we're going to say. This is what I do. This is what we do at Bible Club. Thank you, Karen, for helping me and Diana. We're, we're, we're partners in, I want to say crime. You don't say crime, but partners in, it's just awesome. So I want us to say this together. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Good will toward men. Luke 2, 14. Now, I got to tell you, my third and fourth graders, our third and fourth graders are much louder than you guys. I'm serious. They belt it out, don't they? So we're going to say this one more time. What? Well, then I can't turn the... Okay. Okay. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and good will toward men. Luke 2.14. And you know they thought I had it. Well, I don't see goodwill. I don't see peace. But this is where faith comes in. If God's word says it, we believe it. God's word is eternal. God is eternal. God is not, we don't base God on our circumstances. We take the word and we read it and we say, God, I want to see you in this word. I want it to be life to me. And then I'm going to go out and preach it. I'm going to go out and testify when I have opportunity. And we're able to do this in the coffee house. I just want you to know, fruit, seeds are being planted in this coffee house. So that was the shepherds. So I'm going to move on, and I'll end with this, uh, to the wise men. I'm going to go to Matthew 2. And this is the last one we did at Bible Club. 
and uh, uh, Karen and Diana dressed all the kids. We have costumes. I started this when I did the primary, and I made a little box of gold, put rocks in it so it was a little heavier, and then a little thing of myrrh and frankincense. And the kids love it. They love to be involved. I just feel like crying right now. They're just so precious. They get so excited. Yeah, Donna? <laughs> Yeah, they just they just get they get excited, and you know they're all. I wish I could make them all. You know, I only have a few costumes, so can't dress them all. But um, so Matthew two, starting in verse two. So they went to Herod. I'm going to start in verse two, saying, "Where is he?" And this is the wise men speaking. "Where is he who has been born king of the Jews?" For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. When you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. We know what his intent was there, right? (laughs) Verse 9, when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, wow, what a miracle, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I'm going to jump down. Well, I'm going to read the whole thing. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Do you know the intent of the wise men that went after Jesus following the start was to worship? Do you know our very first response is to be worshipped? It's not to go, oh, I'm going to go work for you, God, or, or I'm going to even go out and testify. No, it's to worship. We get to give our hearts to him. We, use, we get to give him our voice. We, we get to give him our, our bodies, our soul, and our spirit in worship. Yeah. Our surrender. And the kings of the east, the wise men of the east, I don't know if they were kings. We had them wear Burger King uh, Uh, crowns. (laughs) It's a great prop when you don't have, you know, a bunch of crowns. I don't know if the the wise men of the East were kings or not, but their intent was to find him, acknowledge who he was, and worship. So when we worship this morning, acknowledge him as your king and worship. Worship him. There's one scripture I love in Song of Solomon. It says, the Shulamite woman, she said, I have found the one whom my soul loves. When we love, we worship. He is to be our first love. He is to be our worship, first and foremost. So I just was so blessed by the story. You know, these stories of Christmas are not just kids' stories. They are power-packed, full of the glory of God. And they glorified God. The, the, about the shepherds, they said they went about glorifying him and worshiping him. So let's do that this morning. Let's give him all of our worship this morning because he's worthy of it. Amen? Amen. I just wanted to say uh, this morning we're celebrating the birth of the future king. 
And Karen was mentioning it this morning that it's coming. The king is coming. And, you know, it's just really, the baby Jesus is, is so awesome that he became, became human, he became flesh like us. But he's coming back again. And the same power that raised him up is going to raise us up also, by the way. And I'm ready for a new body. How about you? <laughs> right, Dawn? These bodies are ailing, you know. It's like, okay, the older I get, the harder it gets. But praise God, we have hope through the joy of Jesus Christ or what he did, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, just waiting for the, the day to come and be the ruler of, of not just heaven, but earth also. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Well, I'm not Holly, but uh, we're going to worship either way, right? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to stand, you can stand. Um, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy. Somehow that key got out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Joy. Get the key. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive. Yes. 
Christmas. Hallelujah. Left the flocks by night. 
sight to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find him in a manger bed, Emmanuel, I say. At which you were the frankincense and golden earth they gave to you and cried out hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I know you came to rescue me, the baby. so long. <laughs> I should have cut my fingernails. Out of tune. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good one. I love that one. I got one more song, but I want to do it a little bit later, okay? Um, share just a little bit, um, real quick, and then I want us to break up into groups and pray for one another, okay? That's the best gift we can do for each other, right? is to pray for one another. Thank you, Lord. There's a couple things that the Lord just really stirred to me this week. Um, it's how many of you, y'all, y'all are in your clothes, right? Right? <laughs> and, and your clothes are clean, I'm presuming, right? Okay, and, and so to get those clothes clean, we don't have to go down to the river and use the washboard anymore. We, we throw them in the washing machine, right? It's all automatic now. We got a new washing machine, and Jane's kind of like frustrated with it because it's one of the, they're all water-saving machines now, you know, and they sense the level, and it never gets enough water to get it clean enough, it seems like. But the Lord began to stir to me about the wash cycle and the rinse cycle. We wash our clothes, and it's what wraps us all the time, and it's what people see. Thank God, right? <laughs> they see our clothes, and they're, and, and they're clean, and we, we want to be presentable. We want to be clean. So we put our, our clothes in the washer, and it goes through this agitation cycle, and the soap gets poured in, and it begins to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and it lifts the, the dirt out of the clothes. The water makes it light enough, and the, and the soap releases the bonding that it has with your fabric, and it comes out into the water. But if you didn't have a rinse cycle, that dirt would go right back into your clothes, right? So after the wash cycle, it spins out the water, and then it fills it up with fresh water. A couple times, usually. And it rinses out all of the filth and all of the grime that attaches to our clothes during the day. And sins that way 
in this world. It tries to attach itself to us constantly. And the, we need to have the wash cycle and the rinse cycle. You know, so many, so many people are about the wash cycle. You know, we got to get our sin out of our life. You know, we got to get the sin out of our life. You know, you've been sinning. You don't be sinning, you know. And, <laughs> and then there's other people that are, are more about the rinse cycle. Get into the joy of the Lord. Start floating in God, you know. Get filled up with the Holy Spirit. And all of that is good, both the wash cycle and the rinse cycle. And there's a couple things about those cycles that I wrote down that I don't want to miss. So I'm going to read just a little bit here. We got to be daily washed and daily rinsed. Amen? That comes by getting into his presence, the word of God, prayer, and with one another. Some want to only be washed. There's some that are in this category that never feel good enough. Some of us are that way. We never feel good enough. We feel like God's got to wash us over and over and over and over and over and over. We can't seem to get the dirt off our hearts or our minds. Probably because, you know, that you probably stay there and can't figure it out because you haven't experienced the rinse cycle in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go into that rinse cycle and get washed. Get, just get, just get all oh, rinsed off with the showers of grace and the showers of His mercy. And there are some though that um, are real good about the rinse cycle. And I already mentioned this, but I want to read what He gave me. Some want only to be rinsed. And this can be just a little bit of presumption sometimes, you know, and just taking for granted the forgiveness of God. And forgetting where you came from. And some of it is where we're running from pain. We just want to stay in that cycle. But God wants to take you back to the wash cycle sometimes. In your heart and in your mind. In our soul area particularly. God wants to bring healing to us. Much of us have gone through pain and rejection. And, and it leaves its mark. And God is saying that if you would just allow him to do the full cycle... <laughs> The full cycle. You think about the rain, how it comes down on the earth, and think about the wintertime, all the salt and all the cinders and all the debris that get on the road, right? And then the rains come after the snows. You know, the rains come and it washes it all away. And all that water goes down into the retention pond back here from this side of Bonterre, from the top of the hill where the hat factory is all the way down here and goes through the culvert right behind here underneath the koi pond and ends up in the retention pond. And then that water goes down to a river and then goes down to the big river and the big river goes down into, I think, the Merrimack. And then the Merrimack goes down into the Missouri. And then the Missouri goes into the Mississippi and then it ends up in the ocean. And then the sun begins to evaporate it. Soak it up. Soaks up that moisture into the atmosphere because of the light. The light of the sun, S-O-N. Soaks it up. And then it begins to form clouds. And then there's a temperature difference where cold meets hot. And all of a sudden it condensates and it releases and it refreshes the earth once again. And this is the cycle that God spiritually wants us to have in our life. It's a daily cycle. If you neglect the rinse cycle, you're just going to be dirty again. If you neglect the wash cycle, your rinsing isn't going to get it all out. It takes, you know, he said, there's one scripture, it's on the next page. Malachi 3, um, no, not that one, Jane, hold on. Yeah, that's it, Malachi 3, 1 through 3, it basically talks about how the Lord will come to us and who can endure it? And he comes as a laundryman's soap or in a refiner's fire. Oh, but don't forget, though, after that comes the gold. After that comes the cleansing, the cleanness, the, 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 the fabric. When you can smell your, um, your garment and it's totally clean and it smells fresh. And it's a refreshing that God wants us to walk in. The washing and the rinsing, the refining, and the times that are difficult bring up the things 
in our life that are not pleasing to the Lord, right? And so God wants us to know he's on our side. You know, he does that for our own good. And I feel like the Lord wants us to pray for one another for things that we're going through. Some of us need, maybe need a little more washing, a little more agitation in our lives, you know? (laughs) Things maybe things have been going good for you, you know. I'm saying I want to pray. Maybe God needs to agitate you a little bit so you <laughs> you can learn to depend on Him. And maybe you've just been going through just you know whatever, and you need to be rinsed. You need to come into the joy of the Lord. You know the wash cycles where faith gets tested, and we begin to go through difficult circumstances. And it's you have a choice whether to complain and murmur. Or to give God praise and trust him in it. The rinse cycle is, is like, you know, you can get lost in that if you don't be careful, but it's a refreshing that you need once you've been cleansed. Now, we know we've been forgiven of all of our sins through our belief in Jesus Christ, our faith, right? But we have a soul that has to deal with cleansing and washing. And God wants us to be, he's preparing a bride without spot, without wrinkle, so that we can meet him and be ready for him. And be pleasing unto God. And there's strength when you learn how to go through difficult circumstances in life. There's strength in that. When you learn to have faith and trust in God. When things happen and pop up that you, don't, <laughs> you didn't plan on. You know, when there's needs, when there's, uh, and even infirmities, sicknesses that come up. We can learn to trust that God's going to deliver us. Job said, in my flesh I shall see God. He even back then, that's the oldest book of the Bible. He said, in my flesh I shall see God. He knew about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You talk about a guy that went through some real hell and high water. He went through it, lost his family, his his herds, lost his income, everything. Boils on his skin, pus oozing out, friends telling him he's a sinner. (laughs) <laughs> but he had to learn some things. God came to him and said, uh, who is this who brings darkens counsel without knowledge? <laughs> it's like he's saying, oh. he says, yeah, I put my hand over my mouth. And God says, sit down and I will question you instead of you questioning me. <laughs> do we, we all question God sometimes, and, it, and that's not really the right thing to do. It's okay to say, God, I don't understand. Help me understand. But to say, why, and say, God, you know, with the attitude that God's being mean to us, we need to do like Job, put our hand over our mouth and let God question us. And he took him through all of his creation and said, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you make the sun rise? Can you make it set? Can you create a hippopotamus? (laughs) Can you do all these things? Well, Job put his mouth over and he says, I've seen God. And so we need to trust in him with all of our heart. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways acknowledge him and he directs our paths. And that's the key to the victorious life in Christ. And that's the key to pleasing God and having joy. Joy to the world. The Lord has come, right? Right? Well, what joy is there if you don't have an understanding and a relationship of who he is and what he is for you? He's saying, okay, take yourself, take your soul, put it in that machine, and by faith you turn the knob on and you give me control of your life. And when the trial of your faith begins to happen and agitates you through people, circumstances, sickness, whatever, financial needs, begin to begin to rejoice and thank him that he's in control. And begin to believe that he can provide all your needs according to his riches and glory, both spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Every single area of our life. He died for that so that we could have joy. So joy to the world. The Lord has come. He's come as a baby and he's coming as a king. That, that very song said that. I was, you know, we really don't think about these Christmas songs too much. We just sing them because they're festive. At least me. I don't, maybe you analyze every, every word, but I don't. And I'm thinking about it. 
Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks and hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. He's come as a baby, but now he's coming as a king soon. And so he's asking us, will you give an account for yourself? Today, not on the day of redemption when you meet him face to face, but will you give an account of yourself now? Will you let me do what I want to do? Will you allow me to, to, to change you from the inside out, make you more like me, become a mouthpiece, like Jane was saying, in the marketplace? Or are we about ourselves? Are we about what makes us feel good? We should let the Lord do what he wants to do in our hearts because there's joy in that. The less of me and more of thee, you know, it's like that. It, the, the, less, the more we take up our cross daily, as I ministered about a month ago, and follow him, the easier it gets because we become dead to ourselves but become alive unto him. Amen. That's the power of the resurrection that comes in a daily basis that we should be living in. So I'm going to stop now, and I want us to break up into groups of three or four if we can. Uh, and and just, uh, let's just, let's just wait. In fact, let's just wait a minute, okay? Let's just, could you put on some uh, prayer altar music, Jane? And let's just close our eyes and wait on the Lord for a few minutes. And when God shows you to go to a certain table to a certain person or grab two people, would you do that? Yeah. And then let's just sit down and pray and talk to each other and pray for one another. Strengthen each other. Help each other. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us, Lord with the blood of Christ that washes us, cleanses us, Lord, from all sin. But we still walk around in bodies that have not been redeemed fully yet, Lord. None of us will escape death. But, Lord, we ask you, Father, to teach us and to help us this morning, Lord. And we quiet our hearts before you, Lord, to hear your voice.